Hello, everybody out there. We're back today. We're talking. We're, we're back today with part two of the unexplainable anomalies with the Rav Four. Uh, there's quite a few. Uh, today, I got some new material, some new stuff to show everybody. Some pretty interesting stuff. Uh, but first, I want to go ahead and talk about this real quick. Um, I've done. I did a video in the past that some of you may know. It's uh, was called "Indisputable Visual Proof" or "Unexplainable Blood on the Rav Four Tailgate," uh, where you know, I showed that there's this crazy, this odd blood that appears at the crime lab. Now, I'll go ahead and get into talking about that more later um, at the end of the video. So if you want to hear about that, just stick around till the end of it. Um, but what I'm going to show you guys now is just some really, really strange stuff about the RAV4. If you're interested in watching that video first, go ahead and go to the information below the video and the link will be there for you. Okay, so now we're going to move on to the next bit about a video I did about a disappearing hole in the RAV4. Um, keeping in mind that the previous two pictures you saw and all the pictures I'm going to show you here, the car looks primarily blue. The color of that paint is primarily blue. Yes, maybe sometimes it looks like it has a hint of green, but it looks primarily blue. Now, I think that's important and I wanted to point that out. So, my buddy Joe Burns went ahead and did some little tricks for me with this with this image. Um, I'm going to go ahead and show you the two close-up images of this little bullet hole that that pointer was just pointing at right now. Um, and then what he did for me. Okay, so here we see side-by-side -side images of the RAV4. The, the one on the left is, the, is a picture taken of it at Avery Salvage where you can see whatever that is in the circle there that looks like a slight indent a little bit of the paint got you know taken out and there's like a dark spot in the center that where it looks like broke through the metal and that's why that dark spots there so on the right there if you look where that little hourglass or the little uh, magnifying glass with the negative thing if you look just to the left of that you can see this strange anomaly in the paint there it looks like an x um, it looks, you know, really strange. It doesn't look like really like all the paint around it exactly. And, and, and it just really looks strange that it's in an X pattern and it's right where we see that bull, that hole and whatever we see that, whatever it is in the left side. So I think it's interesting. So my buddy, Joe Burns went ahead and, um, used Photoshop and he went ahead and made it black and white and did a little bit of analyzation on this for me. And I'm going to show you that now. Okay, and again, a big thanks to my to my friend Joe Burns, um, fellow YouTuber. Um, I will put links to his videos, two of his videos, in the information below the video for those of you to go check out. But he's a wizard when it comes to this type of stuff and analyzing images. Now, you'll see on the right side of the screen there that he's got, there's like some bars with colors. And the middle one, he's got it around, the arrow is in the middle-ish, sort of. Um, so this... You see that the arrow is basically outlining the X right there, because uh, it shows up a little bit more profoundly when when he when he made it black and white like this. So you see it was tracing around it. Now the thing here the thing here is that you know he he said that he he could have actually no he actually knows a way that this could happen that he could use, there's a certain brush that you could use that you could sample the color and do that. Okay, so in this one, if you look at the right side this time, you'll see that that middle one with that little turquoise colored bar, he's got the the little arrow all the way over to the right. Now you can really see that X showing up. Like, it really stands out there. And like I said, it's right where that anomaly, that little, you know, speck or black and silver speck or whatever that was in the original picture. And, I mean, it's right there. So... Like I said, he said that there's a tool that you can use in Photoshop that could essentially sample the color around that, and then you could just take it and and he you know you make an X like that, right over the spot where you were looking to cover something up. And like I said, Joe's done videos about this. He thinks that there's been a lot of photoshopping of this Rav4. So you guys, like I said, I'll leave links to his videos below for you to check it out. Okay, so moving on from that strange anomaly, we now have this report from the Manitowoc County Sheriff's Department. That on November 3rd of 2005, they found Miss Hallbach's vehicle. Look down at the bottom right corner there. The description. Toyota RAV4 dark green. That's the color that's reported. Okay, so here we have a report saying that they were looking for Teresa Hallbach's vehicle. And it was dark green. Okay, just pointing this out. Pretty much every account before the 5th is dark green. 
Okay, and I want to give a big shout out to TikTok Manitowoc, the Reddit, um, you know, community. Absolutely stellar job on this Reddit thread that they posted where they drew together all of these accounts of the color of the vehicle and they found that little crooks, that little point where it began to get referred to as blue. So right here, this is the basically the Wisconsin DMV stating that it's a green SUV. It's a green, you know, RAV4. So, like I said, all of all accounts of this vehicle before the 5th are green. That it's a green vehicle. Teresa's friends, everybody says it's a green vehicle. Okay, and now we're seeing what the RAV4 should have looked like. This is what was being shown on the news. A dark green RAV4. That's what everybody was looking for. Pam Sternum had a picture that was just like this one. And this is what everybody was looking for. This is what Teresa's friend said her car looked like. Now coming up, I'm going to be showing the the flyer uh, that they passed out looking for Teresa when they b still believe she was a missing person. And I hope that you all will join me in a moment of silence uh, out of respect. And I just wanted to do a moment of silence and out of respect and the memory of Teresa Halbach and, the, and, and, you know, and for her family, who I'm sure is just, you know, still feeling the loss and feeling the pain of that loss to this day. What I wanted to show you here is if you look where that arrow is in the picture, it's clearly stating in the, in the flyer generated by the family and friends that it was a dark green RAV4. Um, so that's why we're looking at this particular thing. So we're moving on to the next bit now. Okay, and this is an interview with Stephen by office, uh, by Deputy O'Neill up in Krivitz, where clear, clearly Stephen states that the RAV4 was green. Again, like I said, every account. This is on the 5th, but Stephen's in Krivitz, so obviously he hasn't seen anything yet. So he's still saying green. Okay, so here we have the call that Pam makes in to, to uh, dispatch her when she's talking to Weigert here. And she asks what specifically, what color the RAV4 is as she's looking at it because she has a picture. And dispatch tells her it was green. To which at the bottom there, she clearly responds, well, uh, this one's like a bluish green. Interesting. Okay, so this is from a, a pretrial motion filed by D Dean Strang and Jerry Buting. Attempting to suppress the RAV4 and, and the evidence that it was and contained. Um, the reason why is they, they feel that the affidavit that was obtained to do the searches of it and everything was uh, improper or was, was not truthful, essentially. And the reason why they say that is that further contrary to the uh, averments in... Um, paragraph 5 of the search of the warrant affidavit, the volunteer searchers did not state that they had located a vehicle matching the description of the vehicle owned by Teresa Hallback at Avery Salvage. And it goes down to this other point where pointedly noted that the color was different for, than that than she understood Teresa's car to be, that the RAV4 was identified as green. But Sturm described the vehicle she found as bluish green, though it is clearly more blue than it is green. So that's from the pretrial uh, suppression. Okay, so now we're going to move on to Kratz's opening argument. Um, he right here is basically saying that Bobby Dassey, he's going to that D Bobby Dassey is going to say that he saw the girl get out of her teal or blue or green colored SUV and actually take picture pictures of the van. Now that's interesting because I'm actually going to show you what Bobby Dassey says in his testimony and also the way that Kratz responds to Bobby's testimony. So that's coming now. So here we have Ken Kratz's exam, um, you know, questioning of Bobby Dassey on the stand. Uh, he says, you know, what did you see? And I seen a vehicle, or Bobby Dassey says, I seen a vehicle pull in the driveway. Do you recall which window you're looking from? You know, on and on. Um, can you, Bobby, could you describe the vehicle for the jury, please? It was a light green SUV, like a teal color. 
How do you know that it was about 2.30? Because I was going hunting that night, so I, I wanted to get up and blah, blah, blah. And then Kratz says, all right, from which way did this blue or teal SUV drive in? Now, Bobby clearly said light green or teal, yet Kratz asserts blue or teal. Just pointing it out. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, this is where we kind of bring it all together here. Uh, possibly, I mean, at least it looks real, real fishy as to how this car might have changed the way it did. You see that this statement was taken on 12106. It was a few months after the RAV4 was found. Um, and basically nobody had talked to this guy. So here's what he had to say. And what this gentleman says is, is that on the 4th of November, he was watching um, over by Cuss Road. He saw uh, a patrol car. He also saw um, he also saw the 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 SUV. Um, he said that there was a hole in the windshield and a hole in the driver's side window. He also says that when he saw when he heard about Hallbox vehicle missing, that he thought it was perhaps this one. But he states the one on television wasn't the same color. What he's saying there is the one that he saw on television after the fifth didn't look. The same color as the one that he saw with the hole in the windshield and in the driver's side window. So, this is highly interesting. I mean, this is this is totally interesting because, seriously, how did this car change color? How? I mean, you saw the pictures I showed at the beginning of this video. That that SUV, that Rav Four is blue. It's blue. So, this is highly interesting stuff. This guy seems to have seen those bullet holes in the windshield. Okay, so now I want to go ahead and at the end of this video share some of my thoughts about this mysteriously appearing blood on the tailgate of the RAV4. Okay, here we go. There, After my first video, there were some people that came in with suggestions. Now, there's been suggestions about how that came to appear, but... There's not really a consensus. It's been suggested that fingerprint dust made it appear. It's been suggested that it was luminol that made it appear. And it's been suggested that just lighting, just the lighting at the crime lab alone, compared to the outside light at the yard, uh, made it appear. Okay. So let's let's roll with that. Let's say, okay. Okay, let's say that's let's let's say that's valid. Then there's the problem with and trust me, you've seen everything that I've pointed out already in this video. Then you got the problem of Ken Kratz lying about that blood. That blood was sampled and Sherry Colhane tested it. She was able to determine that it was not Stevens, but she was not able to get a full profile from it. I mean, that just seems a little odd. It seems more plausible to me that she saw it wasn't going to be, it wasn't going to point at Steven and that she maybe just abandoned the test possibly. Um, I don't know, but the fact is Kratz tried to claim that it was Steven's blood at trial. Jerry Buting caught him and called him out on it in front of the jury. So right in front of the jury. So... You know, why is Ken Kratz lying about it? This this particular blood stain, you know, especially when it was, it's clear in the lab reports that Sherry Colhane claims that it was inconclusive, and she says at trial that it was not Stephen Avery. So, I mean, you guys can, I mean, I guess people are going to believe whatever they like, of course, but it seems to me that there is something extremely fishy with this whole RAV4 situation. Um, that gentleman, Mr. Conch, uh, whatever his name was, I mean, that that s believes he saw the RAV4 with a bullet hole in the windshield in the driver's side window, but that it didn't match the RAV4 that he eventually saw the, in the coming days on TV. All right, so here's the questions I think we're left with. Number one, could 
all of Teresa's family and loved ones have all had some kind of mass hysteria together where they believed that the RAV4 was green or dark green, and they solely believed it was those colors. You can't deny it. Even the Wisconsin you know, DMV believed it was green. So that's the question we're left with. Was there some kind of mass hysteria where all these people that knew Teresa and, and really well all saw a green car when it was really blue? Wouldn't one of them have said, hey, you know, sometimes in a certain light, I think it's looked blue. So maybe we should say green or blue. Don't you think on a flyer or something like that, that somebody might have said something like that? I mean, it makes sense to me. So uh, that's the first question. The next question is, of course, why is Ken Kratz saying in his opening statement that Bobby is going to say that the RAV4 is blue, teal, or green? And then when Bobby gets on the stand, Bobby says light green or teal. So, and then Kratz goes as far as to correct him and say, you know, in closing you know, or whatever, summing up with the jury during that where he basically says blue or teal. He asserts that it's blue or teal where Bobby had said light green or teal. So there's that. And then you got to ask yourself question number three, what on earth did really, what did, what on earth did Mr. Comkey really see over at this turnabout over by in, in Michicot by the, by the bridge over the river? Um, I mean, what did he see there? He can't help but wonder. So I'm going to leave you with that. Please subscribe if you haven't already.